In this example of multi-beam imaging sonar, let's take a look at a concept I like to call 3D scanning. I also like to refer to it as a hologram scan. This is because the result we see on the sonar display reminds me of a hologram once we start to rotate. Once again, we see here that the sonar display in the top right corner is actually not the one from the Deep Trekker Bridge Controller, but it is the one from Blueprint Subsea's program called Oculus Viewpoint. You can see that in the program, we've inverted the cone so that we can have a more accurate representation of the way that we are aiming the sonar. This way, we are not having an image represented that is upside down. As the ROV spins, we get a really good look at that three-dimensional or holographic style image that I was talking about earlier. While not exactly the same, I kind of like to think of this concept as an invisible revolving door or a full body scanner at an airport. As the acoustic waves rotate, they are constantly scraping the front edge of different parts of our target, therefore giving us that illusion of a three-dimensional hologram. Another thing we can see here is the illusion of the image rocking. That is due to the uneven seafloor below the ROV. Now, as we come over to take a little bit of a closer look at our target, we're shifting into high frequency mode, which is giving us a more high fidelity image of that wheelbarrow below us. You can see much more detail. However, our range is now much lower and capped out as well as the actual width of the acoustic waves are now more narrow for high frequency mode. If we position the ROV just right, we can get an extremely high fidelity side profile of that wheelbarrow that's there sticking out of the seafloor. So much so that we can even see bubbles and some of the tread on the tire. You might be wondering what some of those extremely bright bands are that are stretching across our cone there on our sonar display. Those are essentially just a very loud response or a very loud ping reflecting off of the wheelbarrow and giving us a little bit of interference. Now we'll start to descend a little bit onto our subject. And as we stop our ROV abruptly, you can see even a little bit of the bubbles and turbulence coming off of the thrusters at the top of that sonar image. And now, as we rotate a little bit around, we really start to get a nice three-dimensional holographic view of those metal feet that are protruding out of the wheelbarrow base. This angle shows a great example of a kind of a spotlight effect for the shadowing there. So since we are above the target, shining down on it, any time we strafe off from that center point, we will start to get that shadowing spotlight effect. As we change positions of the ROV, we can get another very good look at all of those bubbles coming out of that tire, as well as something else. If you look closely, you can actually see some faint blue lines coming out of the seafloor. And what those are, while they look like noise, a lot of them are actually seaweed that are reaching up past the wheelbarrow. Now we're going to decrease our sonar range down to two meters and get another look here at our wheelbarrow. You'll notice as we move around a little bit here, the image fades in and out. And what is happening there is actually kind of the same thing as when we were rotating. As we shift around and stray away from that center point, our acoustic waves coming off of the sonar are no longer scraping down the front edge of the wheelbarrow and then therefore loses that image. So as we shift the ROV around and manipulate our angles, we eventually will have that image come back into play. In order to get this style of image, we are approaching the front side of the wheelbarrow with the sonar aimed directly down at negative 90 degrees. Now we are going to decrease our sonar range yet again down to one meter. And we can see here really a great example of the high fidelity of the Blueprint Subsea Oculus M3000D sonar. While it's not the best sonar in my opinion for doing a large scale search and rescue mission, it does do an absolutely fabulous job getting an extremely high fidelity image of objects that you would otherwise not see in extremely murky water. This makes it the perfect inspection sonar for clients that would otherwise not be able to evaluate the target that they are trying to get a good look at. While the sonar display is currently being shown from Blueprint Subsea's Oculus Viewpoint program, keep in mind that if we were piloting using the Deep Trekker Bridge Controller, we could be viewing all of this same sonar data in real time as we pilot. One of the things I really love about the Oculus Viewpoint program is the ability to take live measurements. So if we were hooked up to a laptop, 
viewing the sonar, while I'm piloting, I can have another team member take important measurements and give me information that I might need during my inspections. You might be wondering, what happens if I'm piloting alone? Well, that's all right too. You can still record your sonar files directly to your DeepTracker bridge controller on the micro SD card, whether it be through a sonar log file or through our handy data logging feature. Then you can upload them to the Oculus Viewpoint program and take those measurements you need to complete your inspections in post. In my opinion, the multi-beam imaging sonar is one of the most important tools that you can add to a Deep Trekker ROV to complete anything from infrastructure inspections all the way to incredibly important search and recovery missions. The fact that even in zero visibility waters, we can still produce lifelike images and while manipulating the sonar in certain angles, see three-dimensional and holographic style images really show how effective a tool the multi-beam imaging sonar is when mounted to an ROV.